Hi, um, today is the 31st of May 2018. I'm Paul Worrell. I'm the chief developer and founder of Zonified and have a slightly longer sort of vlog today. Um, up until now, um, we only made available the actual running application for Zonified. So we'd made it available as an app um, on Google Play and as an app for iOS, although you had to get that on request uh, because it was only available on test flight. Um, but I haven't made the actual source code available. But as we're now looking to um, move on from um, the halting of the ICO, um, then uh, I'd like to carry on working on the code and I think that'd be better in the public domain. Um, so as crude and as rude as it is, um, I'm gonna move it from Atlassian um, Bitbucket, which I've been using to my GitHub account. So I'm gonna talk you through doing that. Okay, so First thing we want to do is on my GitHub, let's create a repository. Um, I'll call it Zonified Wallet. Okay, um, teams don't matter. New repository, here we go. Okay, so now I'll give it a repository name, Zonified Wallet, the same. Um, description, uh, a digital wallet for securing activities and I want it to be public um, we don't need to add a license and I should have a dot git ignore already so go ahead and create right got some instructions now on how to add a repository now we already have an existing repository so Okay, so I'm going to need to add a remote repository and then push up my latest changes. So let's do a git status. Where are we? Uh, yeah, I'm just checking. I'm all right. What was my last commit? Okay, so tested on Geth and the last commit was Tuesday, January the 9th. That's right, with a Geth. To, to, to work with a geth update. Okie doke. So, um, <clears throat> I never remember the git commands. So I always have to have a quick look. So let's remind myself what remote we have now, which should be Atlassian Bitbucket. Ah, oh, no. I need to do the verbose. Here we go. Git remote minus V. Okay, and then that should show us the URLs of my current origins, which is the Intuition repository on Bitbucket, Zonified DAP. Okay, so I need to remove those origins from my current local Git repo. So that will be Git remote remove origin. One doesn't do this very often, so I have to think about it. Git remote remove origin. Okay. So let's have a look. Now we have no origin, so we're completely detached. So now we can go back and add my new origin on GitHub and do the initial push. Do the initial push up to the GitHub repo. Okay, there we go. 3,024 objects. Wow, just like that. Okay, what next? Let's go and have a look at the, the repo. There we go. It's all there. Rude and crude. Um, ah, I didn't have a license.txt. 
and I don't really have much in my README either. Um, <laughs> so I probably should flesh that out. I won't do that now, I'll do that later, but I'll at least go and put the license file uh, on there. Just before I do that, I'll try and run up the app locally, um, just to assure myself that it does work. So I need to make sure I'm using the right version of Node. It's actually a Meteor-based um, app, so I can run Meteor up on local host 3000. Let's go and have a look to see if the app has rendered. Okay, I won't log in or anything. <coughs> I'll just check the basic things. The about page and creating an address and the front page. Okay, so I, I now know the code that I've got theoretically works. Um, or it runs up anyway. I haven't done an exclusive, uh, not exclusive, but a thorough check. So let's just have a look. Um, license file. Ah, oh, before I do that, let's just look at the package.json. There were some hacks that I had to do. So with Bitcore, Mnemonic and ETH Light Wallet, which are probably old versions now, as I did this some time ago, I did actually fork those and make some changes to make them work. So they're clear in the package JSON. Um, okay, so now let's go and create ourselves a license.txt to prove that we can check things into this new repository. License.txt. And there you go. It's asking me to add it to the Git repo. So I'm going to use the MIT license, just about the simplest license. So I'll just pull it from opensource.org. and um, go back, paste it in here, change the year um, and the copyright holder to myself. I put 2016 because in reality that's when we first created it. I need to do a bit of editing here because I've lost my line feeds. Okay, there we go. Right, so now I should be able to see that that file is um, ready to be checked in. So I'll just add it manually. And I'll do a commit. Just say added uh, license, mit license. Okay, and then push it up. So then I, I can go and see the change in the new public repo on GitHub. Okay, let's go and have a look. One cool thing is uh, we can now see my repo and I've actually been doing some work in the last couple of years. Not many green dots I know. But, uh, ah, and I can go and uh, filter it by year as well. Good. So when that was on a private repo on Atlassian Bitbucket, no one could see what I was up to. Um, ah, there we go. So we've got the license.txt file in there. So that proves we've got the basic mechanics of this new repo working. And from now on, I'll do everything um, in this public space. Obviously, sort of the code that's in there will reflect some of um, the facts that it was private at the time. Okay, so yeah, I think, I think that's it. Um, thanks very much. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe if 
you're finding these things vaguely interesting. Thanks very much. Speak tomorrow.